The Rottweiler is an incredible breed, a fascinating breed with a wonderful history. And in today's video, I'm gonna hand you over to one of my breed history experts who's gonna break down the history of the Rottweiler, ideally in under five minutes, so you can learn everything you need to know about where this incredible breed came from. Like most large, powerful dogs with broad heads, the Rotti is believed to have descended from ancient Roman dogs of war, and as such are in the same Molossa group as the Mastiff-type dogs that we love so much here. Whether we can definitively trace any breeds back this far is highly contentious, particularly due to the paucity of non-literary and non-artistic historical records. But what we can say with some confidence is that some distinctly Rottweiler-like dogs accompanied the Roman legions over the Alps, functioning variously as livestock and personal guardians, cart pullers and cattle drovers, roles which they excelled in and thus retained for hundreds and hundreds of years to follow. When the Romans arrived in Germany in the first century, these pre rotty dogs accompanied them and, as dogs do, started to go forth and multiply, populating the southwest until they were a definitive part of the landscape. By the second century, the Romans had left them behind and they had become firmly established as a working dog in Rothfile, the rough translation of which is Red Town. And as time passed, they earned the moniker of the Rothfile Butcher's Dog. The reason for this is that beyond continuing its success as a guardian and drover of livestock, it quickly became clear that this dog was a superb protector of anything it was charged with, and as such was tasked with protecting meat in transit and then protecting the earned money in a satchel around its neck for the return journey from market. For several centuries they worked and excelled in these various working roles until the advent of the railway. The need for cattle droving dogs suddenly all but disappeared, and in some places, issuing the trains in favour of droving with dogs was expressly prohibited. The dogs quickly dwindled in numbers as their necessity waned until the point of near extinction. As the story so often goes, it was left to a handful of breed enthusiasts to revive the breed, replenishing its numbers and reinvigorating the genetic pool. Thankfully, the Rotti's versatility and athleticism meant that all these efforts were not in vain and the numbers gradually returned to their previous splendour with the dogs redeployed in many other working roles, particularly those that demanded more power than other working dogs could provide. As time progressed, and now we're approaching the modern day, the Rottweiler was used less as a guardian and herder of livestock, but far more so in the modernised society as a service dog with particular success in the military. Once a staple in police dog work, they now typically lose out on this position to less forceful independent breeds who are less of a liability for the officer's handling or attempting to handle them, though some forces still employ them selectively. America fell in love with the breed once it had found its way from mainland Europe across the Atlantic. But for a number of reasons, the AKC did not recognise the breed until the 1930s, and then, of course, distanced themselves from the German origin the next decade due to World War II. The Rottweiler's heyday came in the mid-90s when they topped the AKC list of most popular dogs in the US as a family dog, and they continue to feature in the top 10 30 years on. It's worth noting at this point that, as is often the way with American reimaginings of established breeds, that many German breeders of Rottweilers, and indeed of Doberman dogs, decry the American version, calling it too soft and gentle, even to pay homage to its confrontational roots. The German version indeed remains more muscular and compact and retains far more of its intensity and drive. Whether this can be called superior or not is up to the owner and handler, but for anyone looking for a family companion, and that's the vast bulk of dog owners nowadays, a less aggressive, less driven dog can only be a good thing. Indeed, due to the work put in by breeders across the globe to soften its hard exterior, the Rottweiler now excels in service and therapy roles even more than in traditional agricultural working ones. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that information as much as I always do. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here because we make videos on the Rottweiler like this every single week to help you be the perfect Rottweiler owner and I cannot wait to see you on the next episode.